Hey church, good morning. This Sunday we celebrate Palm Sunday. We don't have any palms, but we have some palm trees. Joe took this picture. We're not sure whether it was Hawaii or in Israel, but we know that Jesus was in Israel. I would like to just share with you uh, from Zechariah chapter 9. It's a beautiful passage of scripture. It's prophetic. It's talking about a king that is going to enter the city of Jerusalem victorious and righteous. And I want to read it to you. It says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey. We know that in a week or so later that Jesus would be crucified. He would die for our sins and rise again from the dead. This was a picture of the victorious Christ. I know that we're going through a very hard time in our country, but we serve a victorious Jesus who is riding into your life with the victory and the forgiveness of God that we all need to get the victory this coming season. So we love you. We've got a great church service for you, and we'll see you real soon. Good morning, church fam. Welcome to another week of online church service. We're so glad that you could join us today. Today is Palm Sunday. So why don't you lean in a little bit and we're gonna worship. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Space between where I used to be and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? Across the best the burden another died for me there is another in the fire all my death that put death in me Should I ever 
to week three of our online gathering. Really proud of you, church. You know, this has been very disruptive to all our lives, to our work, to our family, to our schedule. And, uh, you know, I was watching the live chat last week and I saw many of you jumping on and jumping off. I personally couldn't catch up. I had trouble getting on. I was like, I was at the way end of it, but that was okay. Eventually I was able to figure it out. And I think that's kind of the season that we're in. It's not ideal. It maybe feels very uncomfortable and uh, we're not, we're in uncharted waters. Uh, but you know what? We'll learn to swim. We'll learn to figure it out. And I just love that we're all gathering together. So well done church. And um, we're looking forward to seeing more and more and more of you online in the chat room, cheering us on. Pascal had a funny little joke that he said, oh, I feel bad for Pastor because he can't be in his pajamas because they were watching in their pajamas. I just, I just like smiled and I said, that's Pascal, he made me laugh. And um, I felt like I was in the room with him even though we were in the room together. So I love you, Pascal. Thank you for your great jokes and your sense of humor. We love your family. And uh, I just really appreciate Emily. I appreciate that her too. She created a studio, her mom helped her, and they're shooting songs in, in their house. We're all doing this in our house. We're in our living room now, and we're making it work. And uh, we don't want to sacrifice the good for the perfect, so we're gonna keep doing this. And our goal is to love you, encourage you, gather as a church family on Sunday morning, believe God, and pray and share the word and share some worship and have um, have some strength and some encouragement and some good news come into our Sunday so that on Monday we have some ammunition to fight with. Amen. So um, if you got the email this week and if you didn't, underneath in the YouTube description, there's a way to contact us, so you can do that. But one thing I was really excited about doing was that um, Madeline and the kids team put together the email, so we actually sent out the curriculum to all the uh, kids and all the, all the families with uh, children, so that the moms, not to give you something else to do, we're not trying to do that, but maybe it's something additional, something fun, something faith building, something you could do with the kids. I know anytime Noah's with me and I go into Sunday school and I listen to the lesson, first of all, I love all the kids and how they react and respond and answer questions, they're so sweet. But I also, when they break down the, the gospel and the message in a, in a kid's way, I'm like, oh, that's amazing. And it's always fun crafts and stuff to do. And I get the, um, oh yeah, I get that metaphor. I get that craft, how it connects to Jesus and the message that's in. So we encourage you families to, you know, if maybe you're having a bad day. I was talking to a mom today and she's like, it's so hard to fill up the hours, you know, with the kids. So we want to give this as a resource, something you can do again, that's good good news for you and your family to share around. And um, so I love that. And um, we want to, again, thank you so much for your giving and your generosity. How amazing was it to see Samaritan's Purse, who we've been supporting, 
And last week we sent money because we saw that Italy was suffering and we sent money to Italy. And then all of a sudden, New York is in such dire need and they sent those trucks and they set up that hospital in Central Park. And it reminded me of Philippians. In Philippians 119, it says that God's generosity will even exceed our generosity. So, you know, I just felt like we sowed that little seed into Italy to help somebody else. And then God said, you know what, now New York needs help. I'm gonna send help your way. And I just feel like that's how the kingdom of God works. It's just amazing. We just do, like we talked about last week, we just give it to Jesus, the, what we have, and then he's gonna bless it in ways that we can't even imagine. So um, I just wanna encourage you. And uh, my scripture that I wanna share with you today is in Psalm 118. And it says, this is my mom's Bible. Uh, I like to break out my mom's Bible because she's marked it all up. She wrote hallelujah here. She wrote exclamation point there. And her little notes are on the margin. And um, it gives me great comfort because the word of God had always been her anchor and her compass. And she passed that along to me. So I love it. I love to read my mom's Bible. But in what, Psalm 118, 24, it says, this is the day, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will, or I will rejoice in it. And I love that scripture because it reminds me not on the good days that this is the day the Lord has made, but maybe on the challenging days. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. About two Fridays ago, um, I got a call from John and he was driving himself to the hospital for an x-ray on his lungs. He had been confirmed that he had the virus and things were not going in a good direction. And the doctor said, I need you to get to the hospital and have a chest x-ray. And when he called on the way to the hospital, I was not having, that was not a good day starter for me. That really felt, I felt like very anxious, overwhelmed. I thought of Katie, I thought of the girls, I thought, oh my goodness. And then like so many of us, the most difficult part of this is that we can't go be with the people we love and want to just be in the room with them because you can't, you can't be around. I couldn't be around Katie, I couldn't be around the girls, I couldn't be around John. So that was an additional challenge. But I had to remember that though I wasn't with him or them, God was with them. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it. I will rejoice not in the circumstance, not in the virus, not in what's challenging me, but God is with us. He made this day and therefore if I look to him, I'm gonna be able to bring him into this circumstance. Yes, John got the x-ray. Yes, he had double pneumonia. Yes, it was a very scary and um, you know, tense time, but you know what? He's on the other side of it. God is good, they're doing wonderful. So again, we don't rejoice in the circumstance, but I wanna encourage you when we open the bills or we get the phone call or we're praying for somebody and it looks really dicey, remember, God, this is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Quick, quick two testimonies, two people that I know were in the hospital, not doing well, they're out of, they're out of critical care doing better. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We just keep giving things back to Jesus. And two people I know actually started great jobs. One person I met and they got fired and they were like, how could I get fired? Like not connected to anything. Something actually they did on their job caused them to get fired, rightfully so. And they're like, this is the worst time to have this happen. And I said, you know what? It happened. That's why Jesus came to cover our mistakes, to cover our failings, to cover our fallings. And I just prayed with him right in, right in my driveway. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna believe God that you're gonna get a better job, even a career, not just a job, but something better. And that was that. And um, next time I saw him, I said, how's it going? And he said, you're not gonna believe it. 15 minutes after we spoke in the driveway, I got a call and I got a great job and not just a job, a career. So isn't God good? Yeah.
It is. He is good. And I just say those things to encourage you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will, in spite of what's going on around us, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, I just thank you, God, that you love these people that were gathered in your name, that you promised to inhabit what we gather when we gather in your name. You're in our midst. And God, I just pray for financial needs, for um, social needs, for anxiety. God, I'm, I'm hearing lots of children are, are struggling. God, God, we just ask for your peace and your comfort to come upon every parent, every child, every loved one, every co-worker, God, everybody in our world that needs your grace and help. God, we ask you to dispense it. Again, Philippians and says that your generosity is bigger than ours. So God, we put them in your hands and in your care. And God, we thank you for miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. We have also in our description, we have a way for you to submit prayer requests. I encourage you to do that. We've got a couple that way. We get them also via text and stuff, but we put that in there because we want to pray. We want to believe God that this is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Pastor is going to come and give an amazing message. And we want to tell you that we love you and we look forward to these um new gatherings. We're in a new world, but you know what? We're all making the best of it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Love you, church, so much. Hi, church. Good morning. Week three of our online service, Key to Faith Ministries on YouTube. If you would mind, hit the subscribe button. Now, on the right-hand side is notifications. We appreciate you very much. Love you, miss you guys. Hey, Pascal, I am not in my pajamas, but I got my cool socks on, and those are pretty good. And my hair, I need a haircut. I'm starting, I've been watching Back, Back to the Future, and my hair is starting to look like that doctor. <laughs> so we're having some fun here at church together. Really miss you guys. Miss the hugs and the kisses and all that stuff. And I miss the kids too a lot, but we love you. We're so happy to be with you. We're so happy to join with you this Sunday morning. I believe God has a wonderful word for you. We've been talking about the miracles of Jesus for quite some time now, and because we're in an age where we, uh, we need the miracle working power of God again. We do, we have a God who does the impossible, who loves to do the impossible, who loves his people, who fights for them, who heals them, who delivers them, who comes after them with all of his might to save them, from their enemies and this pandemic is an enemy so i want to just praise god and thank god and you've already heard from pastor dana and she gave amazing praise reports there's many more that are going to come because our god is on the job i want to read from uh, to you an amazing passage of scripture they're all amazing aren't they in mark chapter 5 the 24th verse and it's about a woman who had an issue of blood and a huge crowd followed Jesus, pressing in on him from all sides. Now, in the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered horribly, continually bleeding for 12 years. She had, un she had endured a great deal under the care of various doctors, yet in spite of spending all she had on treatments, she was not getting better, but worse. When she heard about Jesus, healing power, she pushed through the crowd and came up from behind him and touched his shawl. For she kept saying to herself, in herself, she kept saying this, I know if I touch him, I will be healed. As soon as her hand touched him, her bleeding immediately stopped. She knew it, for she could feel her body instantly being healed of her disease. Jesus knew at once that someone had touched him, for he felt the power that's always surged through him had passed through him from some, for someone to be healed. He turned and spoke to the crowd saying, who touched my clothes? Who touched me? His disciples answered, what do you mean? The crowd is pressing in on you. There are many. Look at this huge crowd. They're all pressing against you. But Jesus' eyes swept across the crowd looking for the one who had touched him for healing. When the woman who experienced this miracle realized what had happened to her, she came before him trembling with fear and threw herself down at his feet saying, I was the one who touched you 
and she told him her story of what had just happened. Then Jesus said to her, look at these beautiful words, daughter, we are the children of God, we have faith, sons, daughters, mighty to receive from God. Daughter, because you dared to believe, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. I want to ask you this morning, what is your issue? Pastor Dana mentioned so many things, you know, fear and disease and sickness and being alone, maybe job loss, maybe worrying where our next paycheck is going to come from. Will our business close? Will we be hired? I want you to know that God has the answer. God has the answer before this pandemic came, before this trouble came. God, the Bible said, is a very present help in time of need. I want you to know this, that this woman pursued Jesus, but she was not overlooked. God will not overlook you in your circumstance and in your situation and in your problem or in your sickness. God never overlooks people who are searching for them. The Bible says, when you seek me with all of your heart, you'll find me. What is your issue? I believe that God has the answer for your issue. I want to talk to you. Sometimes the circumstance surrounding the issue can be as as horrible as the problem that you're going through. This woman was so isolated. She was isolated by her religion, by her culture, by her family, by her friends. She was desperately alone. I know there are people who are watching this broadcast. You may feel that you are desperately alone. But I want to tell you, your faith is what connects you to Jesus. Your faith is what touches God. Your faith is what brings the power of God into your life. Don't that doubt for a minute that God doesn't hear your prayers. Don't doubt for a minute. But don't pray prayers of fear and of doubt and of unbelief. Don't beg. Don't cry to God that you'll be overlooked or, or abandoned. Instead, speak boldly like this woman did. She said, I know if I touch him, I will be whole. I want you to pray like that today. In your circumstance and in your problems, just say, I know if I pray to Jesus today, he'll touch me, he'll heal me. And as painful as this problem is, you are not alone. As, as alone as you may think you are, you are not alone because God is present everywhere. She heard about Jesus and chose to believe that he is the answer for what she needed. There's a great scripture that's in Philippians 4.19. It says, my God, is he your God? My God. I called upon the name of Jesus almost 40 years ago. I knew that was the name above every other name. I knew that that was the name that healing came from. I knew that in the name of Jesus, that everything that was against me as a person would bow and that every disease and infirmity and, and problem with pack would bow to the power of that name. And this woman knew, and it said, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. You know, the word glory literally means the profuse goodness of God, unending. It's immeasurable. It's as far as the skies to the heavens, the Bible says. So my thoughts are above your thoughts and my ways above your ways. God's, God's mercy far exceeds what you think he, he is willing to do for you. And this woman, she pressed in and she touched him. And I love this. Let me just tell you this. Faith is the equalizer, not wealth, status, position, or influence. If you believe God, you can have an audience with the king of the universe. You may be alone in a hospital room or you may be a frontline worker right now worrying what's happening, what's going to happen to my family. You may have just got laid off from your job, but I want you to tell you that Jesus is ready to help you. He is powerful. You don't have to be somebody special. You just have to be you. God made you. God loves you for who you are and the way you are. And everything in your life is meant to bring glory to God. And God loves to help and God loves to do miracles and God loves to bless his people. The Bible is filled with miracles from the beginning to the end. It's about a God who loves and blesses. I'm going to use James's cup that he made for me from France. Mm. That 
water is so refreshing. You know, Jesus said that he's a well springing up of living water that will refresh every area of your life. You know, this, this story is so powerful because it, it, her desperation didn't lead her to fear. It led her to faith. I pray today that your desperation will not lead you to fear, but to faith. This woman for 12 years suffered enormous limitation. She was unable to do so many things, be with her family, be with her friends, live her life, maybe even have children. She was ostracized by her community, by the, by the norms of the day. But it was God that made her whole, brought back her life. I love this passage of scripture. Jesus says in John 10:10, 10, 10, I came that you might have life and that you might have life much more abundantly. That's who Jesus is. He's the God of an abundant life. And he came to take away those things that are sapping your life and robbing your life. And maybe COVID-19, it might be cancer. It might be circumstances in your life, a, 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 a broken heart from a broken marriage, maybe children that you're estranged from. All these things just rob the life that God has promised us. But you know what? We pray because we have a God who answers. David said, I love the Lord because he heard my prayers. So be bold in your faith without fear and, 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 and without doubt. And I just want to close with this. It's so important today that you pursue Jesus. She heard that he was great. There are so many preachers in this country. We hear the word of God so many times, but it's in a time of crisis where we can really stop for the first time with our busy lives and all the things that we're going through. Never worried about God and maybe not even thought about God. But now is the time. Do you know that God will not turn you away because there's a crisis in your life and it costs you to look to God? That's the kind of God that I serve. There's a beautiful word in the New Testament and it's called grace. And grace is for those who couldn't earn it and didn't deserve it because they spent all of their time not paying any attention to God or what God could do. But in the time of crisis, God showed that he loved us. You're in your time of crisis. I've come to tell you that he's the God of grace. The Bible said in him was grace and truth and one grace upon another, piled upon another, it says in scripture, has come to us through Jesus Christ. So even, even though you may not have pursued about God or thought about God in the good times, I want you to know that he's the God of the good times, the hard times, he's the God of any time. And I just wanna pray with you this morning. I'd like you to pray this with me, Jesus. I ask you to come into my life. I have done things that may not have pleased you, but I know you died on the cross for me to forgive my sins, to wash them away. I know, Jesus, that you promised that after my sins were forgiven, that you would heal me, you would deliver me, you would prosper me, you would help me, you would meet all of my needs. Jesus, I believe in you, and I ask you to help me today. Church, I love you very much. All those that are watching, I care about every single one of you. We have a place for you to send in your prayer requests. We are here for you. Don't forget to hit the bell and subscribe. And we're going to try to have some midweek Zoom services. So get ready to Zoom into the presence of God. Love you. Thank you.